press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to Highway on my podcast with Rocky Mayur and Abhinandan. Well, back. Well, hungry. And we are with the two biggest men in Indian food and travel, Rocky and Mayur. <laughs> And not only are we very large, but we are also very good dancers. Like something we are going to talk about in this episode. Well, yes, indeed, we also have joining us the man who invented the moonwalk, Prashant Sareen, producer, <laughs> director, extraordinaire, <laughs> and also moonlights as the driver in chief for all our journeys across the country. And my name is Abhinandan Sekri. We're bringing you highway on my yes. podcast. Because as long as you can't hit the highway, we shall bring the highway to you. We have pretty much covered all of India. We just have a few states left. And one of those states is what used to be called Andhra Pradesh. At least that is what it was when we went there. Now it's split into two. But we will cover it as one because that's how it was when we now went. Now we don't care. Now we don't care. All we can tell you is that Prashant is a shining example of an upright citizen. We are going to play lots of glowing tributes to him. And in case you're wondering what's happened, he has shaved his head today. <laughs> so you will hear many jokes <laughs> about <laughs> shaved heads and things like that. So please put it into context already. Don't say we didn't warn you. And, we, are, uh, we are all of the generation that knew that that whole thing about when somebody got a very short thing or, or they got bald, you whacked them on the head and you sang Ganju Patel. I don't know how many people listening to this podcast are from that generation. If you are young and listening to it, please do not listen to these rowdy, old-fashioned <laughs> men who are relics. You should not do any such thing. Be respectful to <laughs> all sorts of heads. Those with and without hair or ponytails or not like Rockies. Actually, don't be fooled by our age. You are that old that when, when you see me like this, you should be asking me very cautiously. Yeah, that is something also. <laughs> Ah, is, is all, actually, we didn't ask you. Yeah, shit, Prashant, is all well? <laughs> <laughs> all well, all well. All good. Has, has, the, has the psychiatrist allowed you to come on today and talk to us? <laughs> Are those little bumps that, where they attach the electrodes for the shock therapy? <laughs> which is an extremely, extremely damaging and harmful practice, which was done earlier. I hope it is discontinued everywhere now. But we don't encourage it either. Yeah, now they, they'll just open up your skull and take a little bit of the frontal part of your brain out. Okay, yeah. I don't know about wow. that. I have not gone in for that kind of invasive surgery. Wait, wait, listen, I just want to remind you guys, this is a conversation about food and about Andhra Pradesh. Can we please stop beating around the bush? Let's just make a clean slate from here on and go to food. By, by God, thank you. Yeah, Nikko, <laughs> focus in here. Yaar. Let's not talk about brain curry no. Uh, okay. no <laughs> Uh, we will be covering as much as possible. We have covered Andhra Pradesh several times. So we've been to Hyderabad, Vishakapatnam, Kakinada, Vijayawada, Amlapuram, Tirupati, Ongole, Machlipatnam, Pedipala, Nellore, and many little villages along the way. We can we shall try to cover all we can, and I'll give the usual disclaimer. If we miss any of your favorite places, now you know why, because we have done a lot of amazing travel in this beautiful state. So Prashant, since you are here, uh, <laughs> you have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Hey, hair today, God, tomorrow, baby. Hair today, just, God, tomorrow. Just off the top of your head, Prashant. Just, just off the top of your head. <laughs> Why don't you start? <laughs> Why don't you start? On, on the... <laughs> Where do you want to start well, from? I want to start right at top of that state when we first entered that state via National Highway 5 when we were just coming starting down from, from the head, head, head of the state. Yeah, yeah. And we, it was a beautiful, lovely tarmac road with paddy fields, you know, along its side. It was just an incredibly beautiful stretch. And then we entered Andhra Pradesh. And the first stop was Kakinada, if I remember correctly. And we reached late night in Kakinada. Oh, and, lovely, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but before Didn't you go really to see Kakinara, much that I mean, evening, but it was it's it's let's just talk about those roads in Andhra. Yeah? I mean, they were pretty incredible even back in the day, mm. possibly amongst the best yeah. roads in all of India. I mean, we would put the window down and feel the wind in our hair. Some of us, some of us wouldn't feel the hair at all. But <laughs> <laughs> that was that that was that was part of that uh, golden golden quadrilateral, right? Which yeah, which had come up around 2007, 2008, 2006, 7, 8. Yeah, yeah. And that's most of it. Really political really parties actually did some work. Yeah, most of it had been built already, but Atalji took the credit for it. I remember that. It was very nice. <laughs> <to that. laughs> 
<laughs> but no, it was. I remember we. In fact, we were so blown away by that road that we stopped the car and we did an actual sequence with those mustard fields at the back and it was wide and an amazing landscape. In fact, I have a photograph of exactly that picture. So yeah, and but okay, I don't remember. We reached Kakinara at night, huh, Prashant? We reached Kakinara at night, and uh, it, it was uh, one of those. I mean, it was the typical kind of hotel that we could afford at that time for our stars. <laughs> We, we 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 slept that night. It was early morning that we went down to that fish market. Then that was the first thing that we did in Andhra Pradesh. And I I don't know about for the foodies, but I know for the photographers that was probably one of the most uh, spectacular sequence of all our travels. Uh, some of our most amazing photographs are from there. Prashant just went to town, uh, and uh, so did Rocky. And uh, Rocky also insisted on carrying a shark jaw back, which those fishermen had got, and it disintegrated. Yeah. No, that was the whole point behind it. But listen, that place was amazing. The early morning fish market. There were all sorts of weird, scary, vicious creatures, and that was just the ladies selling the fish. And then there was all the fish and the fresh catch of the day, including large sharks and skates. And uh, but yeah, the, those ladies. Will does somebody want to talk about those those ladies? Yeah, yeah I mean, no. I mean, come on. You know, when your husband is just goes out partying early in the morning, catching fish, goes fishing all day. Then he comes back and has alcohol and lays around and chills, and you have to do all the work. You tend to get very angry. Yeah, that's a lot of very angry ladies, man. And they, I mean, the abuses were so phenomenal. I didn't even know a single word of uh, Telugu, and I could tell that they were and using some incredible words. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get on to that aggressive side, uh, let us tell you we got there before sunrise because these boats go out. I think the night before, or some of them go out like one night before. Some of them we were told have been out for a week. So they are coming. They are coming like from fairly deep inside, which is why they would go, get fish which you don't ordinarily see in these fish markets. They were these blue and green colored eels and these big sharks, which I remember was quite heartbreaking to see that shark just lying there bleeding to they death. They had blue crabs. Yeah, I remember they had they had these blue crabs. You know, these yeah. I think they were soft shell crabs and fairly large. And they yeah. had sharks and they had all kind of fish. So there. I mean, it's all, all kind of it's fish all around, but it comes really early in the morning. It's a really beautiful sight. And then yeah, it was it was incredible. The I mean, audio that, level that, starts rising, tuck 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 tuck, tuck and uh, yeah, then and the market is open as soon as people start coming in. This wholesale selling going on. There was a ten foot bull shark that we've got some nice pictures with, which you'll be able to see. But uh, as soon as the market opens, people start coming in, and then the questions, you know, the typical Indian haggling is like, how much is that for? Hundred rupees? No, I want it for free. No, and that's where the haggling this begins from. Is <laughs> <laughs> Come here. You insult my fish. You insult my fish's children, and you want peace. This is Nada. Kaki, Kaki, Nada. And in case you want to know how tough these women were, they were all smoking suttas. And we thought suttas was a cool word for cigarette. It's not. Sutta is the local cigar that they make right there. And for five, you could get four suttas for five rupees. And we, I had one. I almost thought I was going to pass out, man. It is the most incredible sort of cigar slash fat beady slash small cigar uh, that you can smoke. And these women had one hanging out of their mouth, so they were a combination between dirty Harry and you know. Al Capone. Smarta. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah, and you know that all they they have they have all these legends of all the like really nice cigars that are sourced in some parts of South America. And there's that whole joke about like how some of them, the really expensive ones, were like. Rolled between the thighs of this, yeah, Cuban and, then, and then there were these fisher women and their suitors. But tell me, I mean, did they mean to catch all those big shark? I mean, it's just because they lay these big nets and they just like take this huge circle, maybe two three kilometers inside no, it, the. It, no, no, no. I mean, was, I'm sure I mean, because they were so. It was totally by mistake. They were like trying to catch all the small fish. The shark was just out for an evening swim and 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 jumped in. Yeah, because I think that is one of the right back to land. That is one of the unfortunate parts of this trawler fishing. They call it right. But trawlers, you just right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, trawling is this is this huge thing where you drag a massive net behind you and then you wrap it around a school of fish and you start dragging it in and closing the tightening the net and all these sharks come in to eat those fish because they're all gathered at one place getting mashed and cut. And uh, that's why these big fish get trapped inside and we have no safety nets, you know, like they have dolphin safe nets almost all over the world now where the dolphins can get out. We don't. And uh, we also eat the whole animal. I mean, a lot of the Chinese industry, for example, thrives on cutting off just the, just the fins of Fin. the sharks and throwing the rest of the shark into the water, which is a huge travesty. 
but uh, so they just want the shark fins. But in India, we eat the shark. We don't really go out to catch sharks. But every now and then, a shark comes on and then it's sold in the market and eaten with relish. Does anyone but, uh, remember yeah, how incredible much? Incredible fishing. This was, I think, 2007. How much did that shark fetch? 20,000 rupees. The shark 20, was 20. It was, yeah. they, oh, well, I mean, they saw us and the cameras and also they were saying 20, but. I uh, guess probably, it must have gone for 10. If we'd got one of the ladies at the market to, who was selling stuff to bargain for us, I, I suspect we could have got it for a lot less. Because mm, it's it's yeah. not something that's, they don't have too many buyers for it. It's not something that somebody's sending them out and saying, this will bring in a lot of money, bring it back. It's it just, the cartilage in his fish, like, there was some, remember there was some rays also there. Yeah, there were rays. Stingrays also. I don't know if there were stingrays or not. And there were some other very ugly fish that we couldn't identify. No, that was just the camera assistant that had ripped it fallen down. <laughs> <laughs> No, you have you have a lot of fish. I mean, we saw these whole a lot of red snappers, which are these sort of reef fish that you get. Very nice eating. There were uh, you know people had obviously been out into the deeper water. There were mackerel, sort of really oily fish. There was uh, rays, eagle rays. There were spotted eagle rays. Lots of them. I don't even know how so many of them managed to collect in one place and get caught. And yeah, just I mean, you could pretty much get anything. There were like 100, 150 species of fish. And what a place it was. The energy was incredible. And I think the thing about these uh, these fish markets, which are just like the boats are being unloaded and you buy it there, I guess maybe because the morning breeze or the sea breeze, it didn't smell as much as the Porbandar fish market where I almost fainted. Uh, but this, I, I don't remember any smell overwhelming. That's, that's step two market. That's a wholesale market where everything is put in a warehouse or in the streets. This was right on the beach when they were dumping all the fish off, when they were unloading the fish. So it's nice and open and windy early morning. That's why you couldn't smell. But, you know, you put it in a closed room, of course it's going to smell. Yeah, It's, it's like, you know, all of us hanging out with you. When we are out in the open, we can't tell. But <laughs> if the room is closed, then... <laughs> <laughs> we are not like the you can borrow our deodorant, yeah. <laughs> was there any you know, buildings around, right? I mean, it was it was a wide open space, you know. So so and it had a lovely breeze. There were no buildings around this place, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. It, just it, open it beach. Just, it was literally like the beach itself, with yeah, and low at low tide, you know. So the boats had come in, and and I remember that there was this large, very large statue to one side of Goddess yeah. Kali, you know, like maybe about 30, 40 feet high. Oh, I don't. No, remember uh-huh. Mayur, correct me if I'm wrong. This is also the town where we went to that restaurant, Pataya which, sweets. Had, which was veg. Sweets. No, it no, was no. veg. It was non-veg. Where they were packing these? They, no, they no, were no, packing that's these? Amlapuram. That's Amlapuram. That's very. That's, that was Amlapuram. We went to two places there. One was Kotaya Sweets to have that kaja, which is a cylind- It's like Rocky describes it as a cylindrical jalebi, and kaja is what uh, Kakinada is famous for. And then yes, we went to a place called the Subaya Mess. The Subaya mess uh, was the place which where the inside it was like shaped like a schoolroom. They had all the tables right. in a U shape and they were coming in. Yes, exactly. The that, back. Yeah. Was that, that veg? Was was that, that veg pure, or non yes, yeah, yeah, veg? That was a pure, pure veg. vegetable. Yeah, pure vegetable. I remember that place. I remember it had a very uh, I think they had all those uh, Mallipu flowers and uh, right. uh, it had a lovely smell as you went in. It had that typical South Indian, you know. And they were making a lot of these parcels. Parcels yeah. yes. was basically like a delivery thing. Correct. With a little flower on each one of those packages. So, uh, really beautifully done. Really nice. So, what did you eat? Too. I don't. I have no recollection of the food there. They, they, they gave us a, a beautiful thali. It had, it had a uh, it had a pulusu, it had uh, the papu, which is what they call the dal. Oh, papu, it's yes, I remember. Made. Rocky made some papu jokes there also. Yeah, Rocky oh. made lots of papu jokes throughout <laughs> Andhra Pradesh. <laughs> and once again, Rocky was well ahead of his time. I don't even know if if political f- figures were, were enjoying that name at that way back then. Uh, I, I don't think so. What did Rocky eat there since it was pure veg? Did Rocky he just wine? The, Rocky ate the pure veg. Rocky ate the pure veg, but why it was really fun was that uh, there were giant kitchens. The kitchen and food storage area at the back was huge. And they had all these patilas and all those ladies were sitting there and cleaning. And and we went and had a chat with uh, them also because this guy does deliveries up to 150 kilometers away from his yeah, place. Yes, I remember it goes really far away. Yeah. Did you manage to live without Yeah, meat? that was the surprising part was with such a really small restaurant. I mean, the seating area was so tiny. When we went back, the kitchen was like, you know, it was a huge courtyard. There were like yeah. seven or eight rooms. Just Next. filled with vegetables and there were maybe about 30 or 40 people chopping and cutting and dicing and cooking and, and they were just filled with large cauldrons and fires and I was like, my God, for such a tiny restaurant, they've got such a huge kitchen. And then when we went out and saw all those hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of packets for, for delivery, that's when we realized how, uh, you know, how the thing works in Kakinara. The food is parceled out to people and, and you know, that's, uh, it's beautiful. And really and far really, away. 
got it down to an art and in fact uh, i remember this was one of the few places back then i'm sure now there are lots who kind of embrace this eco friendly packing their packaging almost was entirely of different leaves there was Correct. no plastic use there was yes. one leaf yeah. had this another leaf had that and then all of that was wrapped into a bigger leaf yes. it's tied together yeah uh, unfortunately there was one there, everything was in one big packet there was one big packet with these leaves inside and then everything was wrapped inside so dal was separate sabzi was separate chutneys pickles rotis rice everything was separate all within that one packet so when you laid it out it became you know a thali anywhere and that was such magical packing here incredible well the packing was nice and the coffee was even even better it was spectacular you do you recall how good oh, that coffee man. was no it was fantastic so did, did you also eat a full thali there prashant sarin no i didn't i i you know i have to confess i i frankly i don't like very curry stuff this chota mota you know chip 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 you know soft food on your plate is not my i mean it's not to my liking so i generally stay away from this well i love the flavors you know i love the spice and the play of spice and all of that but eating on a leaf is with your hands and you know my fingers don't function very well so mm. it's it's uh, i mean i don't enjoy that food <laughs> <laughs> like many people do i just confess like one thing i must warn you if any of you plan to take a road trip to andhra this was the one state while you know that is also there in parts of kerala and tamil nadu along the highway like if you're from the north north part of india any time you want to eat the dhaba is serving it's all day here after 3 the dhaba is closed yeah. you won't get jack you know yeah. some of these places even it was 5 past 3 it was closed so or they just finish off the rice so they open it for that lunch time and then some of them open it for the dinner time between that you can't stop there for a chai and a paratha and stuff so that used to be damn frustrating but sometimes when we had to cover two places in a day there's no way we could because other place would close so i remember i found that very frustrating in in andhra pradesh yeah in in fact when we were driving in we stopped uh, at this place called pedipalla and that was the only place we 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 found this aman punjabi dhaba yeah and even though they had the the full thali and stuff but they also had the paneer masala and they had dal and they had aloo paranthas and they had that giant sadar ji remember yes oh. and i remember who said unkind things about us south indians <laughs> He said, <laughs> "No, he said unkind things about the fact that he was like really missing his food from home." Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah, he said unkind things about the food and how or his route was got him to the south every now and then. And of course, he, every third word was a bhen, a greeting to mothers and daughters. He was, he was extremely, <laughs> he was extremely polite with everybody, and he was giving you all the information you wanted. And then suddenly, you asked him. Do you miss your food? Which is when he went into the ah, bah, ah, bah, yeah, I told Kaka that you're crazy, bro. Not in the middle. All the truck drivers from the north used to stop at the Dhaba. It yeah. was like a must stop. It was like, yeah, eat food. After that, two thousand kilometers. Yeah, I mein. think that was only North North Indian Dhaba, like all along that road. Yeah. So the guy was doing a lot of yeah. good business. Okay, gentlemen, if I have your permission, I could okay. just like to move out of Kakinara to Hyderabad, and I'll tell you why. Why? So one Hyderabad was back then. I thought, if you guys remember correctly, I said it is one of the only livable cities I've traveled to because it had an old and a new. Unlike Vizag, which is just like a brand new city, there's no old Vizag. It had the old this thing, and we had a couple of fantastic evenings. And we've been there more than once to the Char Minara and to Medina Hotel and all that. But one of my favorite meals, which Rock, Mayur, you, I'm very heartbroken you haven't included in your list, was we went there not for Hyvan. I played together for another show later. Was on Jubilee Hills. This it was called spice something. Not spicy venue. Rail Sima Ruchulu. No, no, no spicy venue. Rail Sima Ruchulu. It's called spicy venue. Rail Sima Ruchulu is also nice, but spicy venue. No, that spicy. I knew we would remember. We would all remember. So because nice. that is, guys, one of my top five favorite meals of of all the shows we've done and travels we've done. And I think we had featured that in some of the spiciest food. So I hand it over to you, uh, Rocky. Take us to Hyderabad, but first. make me relive that meal which i loved so much and i know we had to go straight to the airport from that restaurant and my pet was phatoing and i very seldom eat that much and that meal is you know my favorite biryani in the world is the portlam mla biryani at spicy venue where we went it was next to the diamond house there's a big house that looks yes. like a diamond <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the spicy venue is an incredible place with some really good food uh you know just really big on spice and we had uh, niku you had a we had a mutton sukka we had a chicken then we had gongura mutton we had ulu bacharu we had potla biryani 
and we just went mad and how i couldn't believe and how you much guys, you were eating it and you guys ate right from the time we got there for the shot to the time the me the assistants everyone you guys kept ordering man i that meal last it was like a two hour meal i mean we were two to an hour no, this no, has now become one of the places where we always if we go to hyderabad there is no power on earth that can make us leave oh, without it, going it's still fun. around that's yeah, yeah. Of course nice it's, our friend sampath runs it now we are really good friends with the owner because we can get a discount of 5% or something <laughs> <laughs> it's it's called bulk discount <laughs> but it's is it's really good food the food is absolutely incredible and again like i said the number one biryani in hyderabad for me is the portlam biryani with ulova charu at i mean ulova charu of course is separate at the spicy venue and that is it's incredible yeah but but should we start with biryani now that we are in hyderabad or what should no, we start with yeah yeah mm. let's start with biryani not prashant you want to tell us about the biryani that you like in hyderabad if at all well the one that i don't like is paradise which is absolute rubbish <laughs> okay according to me but i yeah. think there is a place called bahar and uh, this is run it, it's a is it outside a, the city no 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 it's, <laughs> it's it's in the city it's it's somewhere between the old city and the new city i don't know the exact location but it's i shot it on not well it's just little outside it's on the edge of the old city and i i shot it for another show not for high on my plate that was a posh show it was just incredible and you know seeing that kitchen it's like the old patriarch sits in the building next to this place where they serve this biryani and he's got like maybe 16 or 18 cctv cameras focused in that kitchen and he's watching every one step i mean the whole day he's just sitting there comfortably in his living room in his house which is in the building next to this bahar biryani and he's just watching what people are doing and whole his, day the whole day he's, he's just doing that he's like and alec he's like bro, alec bald and, he's like he, alec baldwin in sliver he knows he knows <laughs> exactly <laughs> he he was telling me he was explaining to me he says now i have become so good at just watching this and knowing what people are doing or what they are doing wrong i know when they put the rice and when they should have taken it out and they haven't taken it out and i know what to tell them i mean and he does all this sitting inside his house all this sitting inside his house his sons were taking care of the you know the running around uh, and so then the restaurant's name should have been andar yaar why was it bahar bahar ke bahar hi nahi nikal raha bahar bahar not bahar bahar punjabi to hum hi andar bol dete hain andar aaje bahar is it only the ac uh, section so, that's called bahar jaise bahar bhi is breeze right no no bahar are no bahar so bahar is, means spring well, uh, spring bahar spring. yeah bahar i just talking to you guys is really putting me in a awkward situation with the rest of the country you foreigners i don't want to talk to any of you anymore <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah bahar may be good i i haven't tried it but i think the biryani that really sort of captures the imagination when you're in hyderabad and it, it's sort of really the old style perfect hyderabadi biryani is the uh, shag house here mayur and i sort of have been mm. there a few times the shag house biryani is just stupendous incredible what do you think mayur you had the pulao also the pulao. there <laughs> yes i had the yes. pulao <laughs> actually if i were asked i like the pulao at shadab better i mean it's shadab, shadab. It's yeah, one of Shadab remind Shadab me. Shadab is another uh, another one of the the uh, uh, stalwarts in in Hyderabad. They do a really really good. Uh, well, they do a good pulao. I don't know. Rocky will tell us about the biryani. No, no, the biryani again. And Shadab is brilliant. And it only starts at about twelve one in the afternoon. And you know there are you can either sit downstairs, which is sort of where all the people are coming off the street, or you can go up the first floor, which is like the family area with AC and seating areas for families, but. Uh, Nikhu, you remember we had started off with Medina Hotel. Yes. We had gone there for Zaban and Paya early in the Habib morning. Yes. That, yeah. That I remember very well. And we so we went there twice. Just across the road. Just across Achha. the road from that is Shadab. Oh, so it's in the old. It's in the old city now. It's in the old city. Old city. Yeah. Right. So uh, since we are in the old city, Shadab. I'm sorry. Shadab is pretty close to Medina, right? Right opposite. Just yeah, across right the road. Right opposite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and in fact, when we had gone there, when we went to Medina. I think Shadab had just closed for the day or something like that, right? When we went for Hyderabad play. Yeah. Do you call that? Yes. I think it we, was. And then we went to Medina also. We we intended yeah. to go there anyways, but. But I remember going there more than once. We went there in the evening, morning. We have you know lots of photographs. We've been to Charminar several yeah. times, and I, I remember both. It's got a lovely character that place, and it's one of the few parts like. back then even if you went to old delhi it used to be such a bloody nightmare getting to old delhi then getting off and then walking into chandni chowk and all that stuff but the access to old hyderabad charminar and then walking through was pretty uncluttered back then yeah 
I mean, back I was... then, but people don't believe it now. When we tell them that we drove our car all the way to Charminar and drove around it and went and parked and had chai, people are like, "What the hell? How could you take your car there?" Because really, now it's cars are there, not allowed right? there. It is packed. It oh. became madness in about three, four, five years ago. The traffic just exploded. It went crazy like everywhere else, and now you can't. Uh, everything has become one way, and there are some streets that you can't go down. So it's but not the same. Does yeah, Madina yeah, yeah. still exist? Is Madina there? Still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, those guys have been around for like 50, 70, 100 plus years, so they're not going to go. Just jog my memory a little bit because in the last four or five years, I mean, we went uh, to Hyderabad first, I think in 20, 2000, 2006, six or 2000, seven. Or 2007. But I don't mm. remember uh, then, but in the last five or six years, every time Rocky and I have gone, Charminar is under scaffolding. And there's some painting or some construction or something there. I mean, you haven't been able to see it in its full glory. We haven't. Not for the last five or six years. I don't know when we first went there. Maybe they're doing to it what they did to Nizamuddin and the Gumbaj there. I mean, it, it was under construction for a long time. But finally, they've left it stunningly beautiful. So, I don't know. It may take a while. Fingers this one was... The one in Delhi was done by the Aga Khan Foundation. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Who... These are all beautiful monuments. And you need to recreate the dyes and the carving styles and the stone and... Everything needs to be exact if you really want to do a good job. I mean, lately, the uh, the, the sort of Indian uh, uh, the department that looks after it, they just sort of put cement there and, you know, just slap it <laughs> on and they're like, okay, done. But th we also went near um, near the uh, Charminar. There's also a Haleen place that we went to, right? Right. All that. Which one was that? I don't... Madina only. We did, we did Madina. Madina. No, no, no. We had... There was yeah, Medina and there is one house. more. Pista, Pista, house. Pista House. Pista House. Pista House. That's yeah, the yeah, ask very me, famous yeah. one. I spend... I spend at least five days in every uh, Ramzan in, in Hyderabad now. And I, I mean, I'm just eating Halim on the streets and eating the biryanis and kebabs and just living my life in the old city, walking, listening to music, talking to people, having fun. And that Halim, I mean, did, did you know, you guys, there's an interesting fact here. In that one month, more mutton is sold in Hyderabad than in the rest of the 11 months of the year. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, because it's Halim every night for everybody. Baby, Halim is only it's available in that one month. Man. Yeah, uh, uh, Pista House to exports it to uh, the Middle East. I mean, they it's all so do. famous. Is it, why yeah. is it called so, Pista House? Is because they grind the meat or this? And I mean, where is the connection of of a I mean, Pista, pistachio and a, question, but, you think it's Pista House? Kut kut ke piece no, piece no, ke Pista, Pista House, pista. man. Pista is an expensive ingredient to put in any food. Elaichi, Pista, Gaju, yeah. Badam. These are great things to put in uh, all kinds of meat. Ha, I like my explanation better. Okay, <laughs> now we shall exit. Old Hyderabad and head to the place, the place where I realized that this show has become quite the spectacular and we have two big stars that like normally we were, you know, get off and go to a restaurant or a place and shoot and people would kind of look at our cameras and, you know, one or two may come and say something. But I realized we had arrived when we once went to shoot at Eat Street. Eat Street was this new place that had come up by the lake, yeah. which had all these restaurants, you know, everything from fast food to biryani. You know, it, it, I think it's a fantastic concept. I hope it's done well. And as lakes in the middle of cities go, I'd say Hyderabad Lake was one of the cleaner ones I've seen. Better than the TT Nagar Lake in Bhopal, which was full of, I don't yeah. know, water. I mean, it was it was a pretty relatively clean water body for a city in India. And we got off and Rocky and we were mobbed. And by the end of it, I just want to club up people because I don't want to shoot my sequence and really get out of there. But people <laughs> keep coming and asking for you know, photo, 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 selfie, you know, selfies, autograph and ye and wo. And I was like, guys, just get Yabko, out. Bada achha lagta hai. I mean, you have just, if you just look at Andhra Pradesh, Rocky and I very firmly believe that it's it's one of India's hidden gems as far as cuisines. Oh yeah, concerned. it has awesome food, I mean, no even, doubt. Even through all our travels, we've not scratched it. I mean, uh, you know, the, the Reddies, that, uh, that, uh, the family that owns the Apollo hospitals, I don't know if she can be called the matriarch, but his wife, She's written this beautiful book on the cuisines with recipes and stuff. And we I, I know, her, I know her name. Yeah, I know her name. What is it? Mrs. Reddy. Yeah, yeah, that one. Thank you. <laughs> Reddy. What? A I, book. I, I, I heaved a sigh of relief when Mayur said that she wrote a book because I was like, you know, the people who run that Apollo Hospital, they yeah. also have this biryani house next door. I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I tell you what. I am, I am not going there and eating liver or getting my liver operated. <laughs> No, but I'm she, glad it was only a book. <laughs> Stop it, man. No, <laughs> That's terrible. It, yeah. it's, it's a book with some awesome recipes. I, I mean, she won the Go Gurma World Book Award for it and stuff. So people in and, and Hyderabad is a great what, collection. What is her name? Menu. What is her name? Vijay Lakshmi Reddy. Uh, Mrs. Reddy. It's it's called uh, the it's called Memoir Cuisines or Nostalgia Cuisine. Yes, Nostalgia Cuisine. Thank you. Sucharita Reddy. Correct. 
If you can afford this book, you can definitely afford a polo. Already, <laughs> we're very lucky. She, she, we got a present each from her. Oh, so, fantastic! And, and she gave us like ulava charu and pickles that she made at home. And oh. oh my God, they were bomb. Look, that that that's what, the what, beauty what of yeah. the food of that region is absolutely incredible. I mean, a it's it's really hot in the summer. Even in the winter, it's not very pleasant. And it's really humid, and it's really windy, and that really destroys your body. So they eat more salt than any other region that I've been in in India. And in fact, even with all that salt in their food, they'll always have a uh, bowl of salt lying on your table. And more importantly, they put so much spice in their food that if you're an artist, only then can you really make food. Yeah. If you if you're not really good at making food, or you're not, uh, you know, you're not an artist, like I said, the food will come off very mediocre or very weird. But those guys know how to work with spice, man. I mean, Hyderabad, all of Andhra, Telangana, they really know how to work spice. It is magical. And in fact, that is the last place that I recommend anybody coming from all over the world. If you take foreigners down to there, to Andhra, and you make them eat Andhra food, they will not be able to eat that food very easily because just of the spice content is so high. And if Indians who love spicy food, that is the mecca of eating incredible food. I mean... Hyderabad, of course, is one, but all of Andhra and all of Telangana is brilliant. Word, and it's not just the spicy food. I just want to put in a word here for Konsu, which uh, is Rocky's and mine, our favorite bakery anywhere in this country. This is a young boy who moved back. He used to, I think, work at Harrods for their food area and all. And he's got this bakery, and, and it is phenomenal. And I remember the first time we went there, it was like a one small one, one little shop. And even though he'd done it up beautifully. And we told him then, we said, look, we're expecting great things of you. And now he's in like three locations and there's always a huge line. Now he's gone to it. And his pastries still continue to be like the best. And Prashant, I think yeah. he's one of only two people in the country who have yeah. that uh, that branded coffee maker. I don't know. You know, the one that's like a big cylinder. It looks like a giant water heater chrome with a big eagle on it. Oh. I don't remember. There's only, there's only, it's like the Bentley of coffee. There's, I think, only two in, two in India. He's got, he's got one of them. So his coffee also is phenomenal. I mean, I remember eating his desserts when we'd gone into the, for, for the first time. Yeah. It was a tiny little place and, you know, he was he was just starting his business and, and we walked in and we ate a little bit and we, and we both turned to each other and I said, man, this is radical. This is out there. And we both agreed and we got hold of him and we said, listen, if you can keep doing this quality of work, you will be the biggest, biggest dessert maker in all of Hyderabad within five years. And he was like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate you like it. But, you know, that's really far-fetched. And we were like, no, man. No kidding. This is just next level. And I'm so happy to see him do so well there. I mean, his food is really out there. And it still he maintains the quality still. Huh? That's the incredible part about yeah. it. Yeah. So, we have so many cities to visit. I'm going to request Prashant to steer us out of Hyderabad, which I must repeat is a city that I was very impressed with. I hope you guys still have kept it as wonderful as it was when I remember. But let's head to... Another city with a lot of potential, but unfortunately, like Guwahati, which is God, God gift is there of the landscapes and the kind of topography you have. But what we've done with it is Jhanduska Machadi. Hai. Same thing with Vishakapatnam. <laughs> it's one of the few cities in India where you can get from the beach to this high cliff, which has very cool breeze blowing within like an hour. An hour's drive from the beach to a like hill station type feeling. Yeah, It could and be India's Vancouver. Yeah, I mean, it could be a bit like California. You know, from the beach, you can just head to the bloody hills. Yeah. But uh, again, the, the Gandhijo Machaya Hoi behind, there's no character to, I mean, sorry, uh, residents of that city. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a very nice city and all. But, you know, Hyderabad has something. Vishakapatnam seems like it was just made new and said, hello, start living here. But other than that, please remind us what all we ate there, Prashant. It's a, it's, Prashant, do you remember? Uh, in Vishakapatnam, we, uh, I think that we'd gone to this place where... Um, the dosa and the idlis were really good. Right? What, what was its name? Hotel uh, Dasapalla. No, the, da yeah, hotel. We stayed there yeah. and then they had a restaurant. I, yeah, exactly. Right, right. So that 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 was one place that stuck up. But Vishakapatnam, I don't really remember much about Vishakapatnam. Of oh, what was really outstanding there. There was uh, the second trip when we went there by the beach. Uh, uh, there was this place called the Sea Inn. That, that little place, just an old retired couple. And on the blackboard, they would put up the catch of the day. And they only opened for lunch. 
and I don't know if you remember, they had their sambar was in a, a little milk pail, and then they had this old teapot from which they were pouring rasam. I remember and they this. They had all the fresh seafood and stuff, and a very small veg 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 thali. Rocky will remember it was phenomenal food. Yeah, just, just outside, just opposite beach. was a opposite was a college, yeah, what kind of a correct university or a college, and there were all these kids that was their favorite place, and we when we went there. They had pretty much packed up for the day and they were finished. And we literally had to scrape the bottom of the barrel and everything. Yeah. But really good food. It was really pleasant food. And a really nice place to sit and hang out in there. So, yeah. But Vishakhar Patnam does lack that, you know, that essential sort of lived-in feel. Ah, yeah. Correct. That's not that feeling. That's not that feeling. I think which is why it doesn't have those kind of restaurants, no? I mean, it, I mean, it's like a functional place. I mean, it, it, it has concrete dinosaurs on the beach. <laughs> so just, I mean, that kind of sums it up. You know, we, we did a few shots over there. It and, has, and a concrete submarine. <laughs> it has a concrete submarine on the beach. So, yeah. Which is a pity because if you look at Telangana, Andhra, I mean, as, as that state that we travel through, you know, that united Andhra, I mean, the cuisine is incredible, yeah, from top to bottom. And they've got like sub cuisines. I mean, the Rayal Sima cuisine is very different from the Andhra cuisine, right? But just the topography of pretty Vish uh, Vishal. I mean, it's one of the few states that can truly boast of a very, very deep, rich culture and cuisine around yeah, yeah. food. Yeah. I mean, there's there's Andhra, yeah. there's coastal Andhra, there's Rayal Sima. Yeah, the, what they do with their pickles, what they do with things like these Gongura leaves. I mean, it's just. Mind blowing, yeah, what they're able to do there. And the names Mamsam, yeah. Uthara Kelu, Royala Iguru, Manas Pattu. <laughs> I love their food names, man. I think they're the Punjabis them. of the South. They're loud and they're brash <laughs> and they like robust food. But listen, be careful what you say because you know, there are some really large boys in, in all of Adra and Telangana, man. There's there is, you know, there are two, three kinds of typical people, typical physiques. And one of them is this really large, gigantic, barrel-shaped sort of people who are just uh, it's such a shock to see them because by and large, people in the south of India are, you know, lean and muscular and, you know, they, they look slim. There are, I mean, there are now of course, there are more and more fat people, but, you know, like me. But, uh, but Andhra has this streak of very, very large boys. Some of them, and they can put away their biryanis. I got into a arm wrestling and biryani eating match with one of them. He, he almost took my arm off at the shoulder. He was the <laughs> arm wrestling champion of Hyderabad. He must be remembering if he hears this. But uh, I'm happy to say that after three and a half biryanis, he stopped and I carried on to my fifth. So, score was one all. So, that was V for Vishakapatnam. Now, let's go for V for Vijayawada. Uh, uh, Mayur, why don't you tell us about Vijayawada? What are the outstanding places? But once again, I'd like to tell you guys, the drives... From one city, one town, one village to the other in Andhra were a treat back then. Yeah, I hope so. they still are. And the first dhaba we stopped at, guys, I don't know if you remember, they just had this very white looking rice and a very thin curry and a very thin man. Each bite that he would take was yeah. a bloody laddu. Like my full meal was one <laughs> bite of his. Yeah, Mayo, tell us about Vijaywada. Yeah, Vijaywada basically is, is well known for what, what we remember is a very unused. We went to that Swagruha Foods. He had lots of mithai. And there we tried that. Uh, do you remember the puthara kelu? The very, very thin, papery kind of thing made with rice flour and ghee yeah. and sugar. And the layers was, and layers and it layers. It was quite nice. It was, yeah. it was belonged to the, my food category, which is sweet. Yeah. And then they had bandar laddus, which we had in another place also. We'll talk about it, which is like, which Rocky described on the show as a combination between a besan ka laddu, which fell into a bundi ka laddu mixture <laughs> and came out with like a little bit of a marriage. So he's like, it's very silky, it's very this, but Think of a basin ka laddu which fell into a bundi ka laddu <laughs> So they had the bandar laddus. Actually, uh, that's that, not what it's that called. It's not that, but that's not what it's called. It's just called a laddu. When you were eating it, people passing said, oh, bandar laddu. Bandar laddu, bandar laddu, bandar laddu. just laddu. <laughs> Listen, don't, don't step away from the putra kelu, okay? Don't just yeah. bypass Vijay Vada. That's, uh, yeah. that's the only one thing that we had over there. And it was quite spectacular. I, I mean... That is really a dessert worth eating, and the amount of work that goes into making a good uh, putra kelu is quite amazing. Yeah, so if you're ever there, please grab it. And Swagruha Foods is a nice place to get it from. And people are very proud of it, by the way. And, and I must say, the friendliest policemen in the in the in the country are probably from that region. Yeah, you remember the three cops that we yeah. met on no, different places? I don't. <laughs> yeah, they were really don't. happy and smiley. They helped you reverse <laughs> your car and stop traffic for you. And ungrateful bald man. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do remember of Vijaywada was the ocean of a river there. You know, the river was so huge. The Godavari, right? Yeah. At Vijaywada. It was like massive in Vijaywada. It was like, 
Yeah, and the show it, was it, like a it's good. It's where we had a photograph with Karan all yeah. of us on the boat. On that boat, yeah. And there's a picture of Rocky and you on that boat. That's with yeah, that yeah. beautiful bridge. Yes, that bridge on the back, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it also had, at then, that time, the Princely Sum in 2006-2007, prawn pickle at 700 rupees per kilo, I remember. Wow. In, 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 that, in, that, in that same place. We were like, this is a good place. We also take this. Because everyone has 5-6 dumps, so we packed it with the Putra Gelu and the... Uh, Bandar laddus or mayur laddus, whatever Nikko wants to call them. But <laughs> then we said, we'll take some prawn pickles and they got like 700 rupees a kilo. We're like, okay, okay. The budget is showing. It's going to be a channel. Now we're giving money to the production house and the channel to Rocky and I to make a hero star. You keep our car. If we had a prawn pickle, we'd have to cooperate and compromise with the production house. Although we said, our thoughts are quite valuable, so you have to think about it. So, you have to think about it. But it didn't work. Very bad, very bad. I have to think about the soul of Rocky. Dee, I want to talk about the average food in, in all of Andhra and now, of course, Andhra and Telangana. You know, if you go to any eatery on the street, I mean, any eatery anywhere on the highway, Dhaba, small places, big places, you will get a nice, clean, hearty, delicious, highly spiced, wonderfully cooked meal. And by highly spiced, I don't mean it'll be spicy, it'll burn your mouth. I just mean that there'll be lots of interesting spices in it. And that is another fascinating part of this because you can go terribly wrong in most states. You can go to a bad place and eat really bad food. But I don't think that bad food places really exist in Andhra and Telangana. The places are either fairly upward of sort of better than average or just brilliant. And I mean better than average of word. Of India, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even that dhaba we stopped at where this guy was eating, like, yeah, yeah, bite of your meal. Uh, it was just, there was this very watery curry which didn't look, they just had two things. And they were serving it with a maggeka, you know, which you wash your in bathroom, which is manga. Hota hai. Mm. It was that kind of place, that is what they, but the food was damn good, man. It tasted wonderful. Food was damn yeah. good, and you could get extra coupons and go and get yourself chicken or mutton or whatever yeah, you could. You could accompaniments. And uh, you know, I managed to get all that, and you guys were too cheap to eat it. You just ate the rice and the watery, oh, watery the sambar or some. I actually went down and got the chicken and the mutton. It was pretty damn good, man. However, Andhra Pradesh also sticks out in my memory as again one of those few places where, like, Rocky had fantastic meals everywhere. One place in Andhra Pradesh. He had a very, very meal which scared the life out of him. I'll remind you where we were on our way to Ongol and we can talk about Ongol next. So let's go to Ongol. Let's go to Ongol. Let's talk about the food first. Okay, let's talk about the food then then we'll talk about the bull. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Let's talk about the food and then we'll talk food around the bull. So So it was was a little dhaba. It had a front and a back room and they said we will only have give you thali but we can't serve the non-veg thali in the veg thing. So then we shot that I think that might have been the first time we shot that where one camera was on me and I was talking about the veg food and Rocky inside and yeah. they gave him rice and this and it was rotten fish. It was like completely rotten and Rocky saying like, I'm going to eat this for short but after that I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like, like when they brought it in, it, it, it smelled horrible. No, I never ate it even for the short. I actually, when the shooting started, I put a piece in my mouth and I almost died. That's when I realized it was rotten and I didn't eat it anymore. And I said it. I mean, I, I've never yeah. lied about a review so I, far in my life. In fact, I remember he so, said that that fish is rotten. Yeah. You you had the rest of the meal, but you put the fish aside. I remember this. Oh, yeah. See, I was in the other room. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, I have never lied about a food review in my life, man. Not so far. I mean, I'm famously known to be quite rude to people sometimes when the food is not good. And they say, so how's the food? I'm like, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Baba. Yeah, like, like Baba. Baba. You're a lovely man, but your food, dude. The, <laughs> uh, the fish may have been rotten, but Ongol is also famous because it's all about the bull. Who wants to talk about the bull? So, we actually went and, you know, hunted for the, I mean, not hunted as in with guns, but because we were told that one of the finest bull species comes out of this region. So, the studs there are like priced hugely and we went to, and we went, you know, looking for the the, the prime Ongol bull, just sperm is like whatever, 20,000 rupees a shot, Patani. But it it has these huge horns and it's got a big bump at the back, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's all bulls have that, but it's a very beautiful looking uh, animal. It has a large, thick body with a beautiful dewlap, you know, that little fold of skin that hangs under the neck. It hangs all the way down to the middle of the body. It's got great thick horns. It's got large eyes. The snout is white. The color is absolutely white. 
It's very muscular and very sprightly. It can really jump and run and move. I mean, it's not like the standard state cow that you have. That's why Ongol bulls are very highly priced. And in fact, in that region, in fact, all of South India also, even North India, you have some incredible varieties of, of cows and, and cattle. And the Ongol bull is just one beautiful specimen. I mean, I would keep one at home. Just, you know, it's like a large dog Huge. jumping around here. <laughs> See, so this is really beautiful animal. You know, do, do you remember it's, the bullet it's, escaped it's, just before this? They were trying to get it for the shot and the bull went off. And it was running around and around. So we had like half the time we were doing the piece to camera and the other half we were keeping a we're look looking out for the bull. Yeah. And then uh, we but, did but the whole like, other thing. It's, it's supposed, it's two things. Number one, the gate of the bull is supposed to be very beautiful because it has this bouncing, prancing gate. Secondly, they use these bulls. They have competitions there once a year where they like everybody brings their prize bulls and they see how large and heavy a stone uh, it can drag. And then the challenge, the challenge is that like the strongest bull wins. So it's not just well, one, like in bull. in Hyderabad. In Hyderabad, they have an annual festival called the Sadar Festival, where bulls like prize bulls from all over the country are brought, and it's like. You know, thousands come out to see these bulls in the city of Hyderabad. Yeah. You know, and it's it's one of those, the Yadav community of Andhra Pradesh, they are the ones who organize this. And for the last three years, the bulls from Haryana have been winning the competition. There so you there's go. this bull called Sultan, whose yeah. notional value is 25 crores. Yeah, I 25 saw. crores. He's the guy, there's, he was on all the channels. There's, right? there's, shining there's, away. there's Yuvraj, who's like nine or 11 crores, I forget. And then there's the Sultan who's 25 crores, 23 or 25 crores. Why and do you these know two all bulls, this? Because we, we, I Why? did a story on, on this festival for another channel. And it was fascinating because there is, I mean, I, I thought like, you know, maybe a few hundred people will come out on the streets. So, I mean, Hyderabad, yeah, for a, you know, it's a cyber city kind of place. I mean, who wants to come and see buffaloes and bulls? But there are like thousands of people on the street. And it's like, they get a band from Pune and it's like a big, big festival. Yeah, so they have some, don't, I mean, don't, they're don't. really, they're big on the pastoral wealth in that state. Don't you know, forget, they really take it. Farming is still a, is still a wide, uh, widely sort of uh, wide occupation. There are a lot of people are employed in farming. They're very proud of their culture and traditions. And, you know, sort of, I think South India does well to keep alive their culture and traditions uh, a lot better than we do up here in the North for sure. And uh, you have these festivals everywhere from Jalika to Tamil Nadu to up here. And then you have all these races and presentations and strength trials. And I mean, there are just a hundred festivals with cattle all around that area. Okay, so that was the Ongol Bull and uh, Rotten Fish. Now, let's... I mean, we did go to Tirupati. We didn't go all the way up to the temple and shoot it there. But we went up to the point where there's this toll road kind of thing where they check everything. Other than yeah, the bureaucracy, I don't really remember what we ate there. Any of you want to help? Another thing, we had two fast food places. One was called Vijay Venkateshwara Bhavan. And there were like five cinemas in a row in front of him. So basically, his business comes from there. They, they did Tiffin's parcel. That was actually the place where we first explained the terminology. Kya hoti hai. Tiffin is the full meal that you get. Parcel right. is what you wrap up and take away. Meals you only get at this time. That was when it was made. And there uh, uh, we had, and it was really cheap though, man. Like you could get that full thali and all for like 25 rupees and you mm. could get multiple refills of it also. Yeah, the, the numbers of places like Tirupati, the number of people going there every day is, is just phenomenal. I mean, it's in the hundreds of thousands of people descend on these places. So a lot of these places have now adopted the character of just providing good, hot, fresh, fast food, which is easy to eat. And that's it. It's They don't really want to make great food or you know, impress you or make you go, wow, that food was delicious. It's just quick and good and ready food. Also, because so many people are going to come to uh, Tirupati by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. I mean, to dhanda chalega hai, kuch Well, that's the whole thing, no? I mean, the same thing with these five cinema halls. When the show lets out, yeah. you suddenly have like 3,000 people coming to you. You want them to feed, eat quickly and move on. So that whole town has become, has got that character, which I think is, is not a good thing because there's some really interesting food that traditionally came out of Tirupati. There are a couple of really good places. We, of course, didn't go to them. I, uh, you know, what you said about... I, th I think Tirupati is just a tourist town here. Yeah. Yeah. And a tourist town basically caters to tourists. So you can get a Rajasthani uh, food place there with chapati and kadi and all of that. You know, I, I've been to Tirupati on some work. Not to yeah, the Devasthanam. Not to yeah. the Devasthanam. Yeah. 
<laughs> that explains many things. <laughs> that explains it. And you did it in lockdown. But, 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 but on Zoom, they gave you the blessing. You shaved your whole hair on their behalf. Yeah. But the whole town is sort of catered towards people from Rajasthan, people from the north, people from UP, Bihar, wherever they are coming from. So they are serving them the food that you know they will be familiar with. As a result, Tirupati really has nothing to offer in terms of authentic Andhra food of any kind. But you can get blessings. You can get blessings. Yeah. Okay. Chalo. Yeah, blessings. Will get. Matha take liya. Let's go to other places that have fantastic food. Please, can we go to Amlapuram? Okay, we can go to Amlapuram. But before that, I just want to tell everybody I'm not reading out any of the mails here because every few episodes we will do one episode of only the mails. Where you can tell us about your travel experiences, your food experiences, and your experiences across this wonderful country that we can share with this wonderful community of Highway on My podcasters that we want to create during the lockdown. So do mail us at h o m p two zero two zero at gmail dot com. I repeat, homp twenty twenty at gmail dot com. Share your experiences, your thoughts, your suggestions. and tell us what you'd like us to do when we head out again when this lockdown and this pandemic is over so that we can get rocky mayur prashant and nikku back on the road again so we will all do that together you can also sign in for our newsletter wherever you listen to this podcast there's going to be a link there you press on that link it will open out a form fill in that form and you would have subscribed to our newsletter or you can just write to us at home 2020 at gmail.com so do become a member of this community that is going to create the most magical food and travel show i promise you we will put everything into it that we have never quite done with the freedom we would like to on that note uh, and also please give our podcast a high rating whatever platform you listen to us on if you give us a high five star rating or a favorable review it makes it more likely for others to find and discover us and the larger this community of travel and food enthusiasts gets yes, yes so so what nikku is essentially saying is we have been held back at many levels by sponsors by channels by people telling us you can't do that you can't do this mayur you can't take off your clothes and run on the road rocky you can't really crack your jokes in the real spirit of cracking them and can't use all those words but if we were to do this without with with a sort of crowd funded platform with all your support then we will really be free to sort of really travel and have some fun and uh, that is what the the legend is and if you don't do that then i'll have to pay for it myself but we will send out Thanks. a really we uh, we will send out a really detailed plan you know in a couple of months once this lockdown seems like it's ending and to all of you who sign up and the idea is this journey will make us stop at various towns where we will have gatherings and get togethers of the hompers so it's this interactive kind of experience that we want to do so stay tuned for that and if you want to get home right just, in and just celebrate good food yeah i mean the idea is you know indian food doesn't find its place in the sun we need to bring it out we need to celebrate it we need to show show everybody what it's all about and we need to talk about it a lot more than we are talking about it and we are talking about it a lot more than we used to and that is thanks to you know shows like highway on my plate that really brought indian food out for the first time and showed india what our food really is but it's caught on now it's become popular but we have to take it to the next level and yeah. that is what the plan over here is bowl mayonnaise बंदर लड्डू खिला क्या खिला रहा है लड्डू तो हम खा लिए बट लेट इज गो टू अमलापुरम अमलापुरम इज आई डोंट रिमेंबर इट फॉर एनीथिंग एल्स एक्सेप्ट फॉर द विष्णु श्री वेज एंड नॉन वेज रेस्टोरेंट एंड आई रिमेंबर द थाली एंड आई नो दैट यू गाइस आर गोना वांट टू टॉक अबाउट द बिरयानी आल्सो बट आई क्विकली वांट टू टॉक अबाउट द थाली बिकॉज़ रिमेंबर दिस वाज दैट रेस्टोरेंट व्हिच वाज ऑन ऑन द रे सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग एंड अंडरनीथ दे हैड दैट व्हाट नाउ इज कॉल्ड स्टिल पार्किंग एंड अंडर दैट दे वर डूइंग देयर अदर थिंग दैट दे आर फेमस फॉर बट द रेस्टोरेंट इटसेल्फ and they very particular they were like vishnu sri veg and non veg restaurant it is veg and non veg <laughs> it's veg and non veg only in india veg and non veg and they had i remember they had the some uh, the vanaspattu the jackfruit stir fry with mustard leaves they had the dal with vridhikaya they called it the mango dal they had the tamarind rice and we, you know we haven't spoken about tamarind yet uh, mm. uh, we will i'm sure they had drumsticks they had uh, rocky tried the river delta shark dry very dry mints spice and curry leaves and everything there was nothing short of sublime man that food was phenomenal and this was just the food that you could sit down to and then there was food you could take away so take it away rock no no it was incredible i mean two restaurants so veg was a separate restaurant non veg was a separate restaurant the the kitchen was out in the open and i remember eating the most incredible things they even the names i imprinted there was gongura mamsam there was royala igru there was bomidala pulusu 
these were just i mean these are magical names here yeah. you know pulusu is a sour nice beautiful curry and you must try it if you ever get down to uh, to hyderabad to that region to i mean to andhra you know royal eye royal eye guru is just these magnificent prawns with chili if you get down and gongura mamsam is like mutton cooked with the gongura leaf again sour really nice and then these are served with like 10 kinds of chutneys and powders and Oh, chilies man. and you know i mean it's just incredible your palate goes into overdrive your brain goes into hyperdrive your tongue is on fire and your heart is like singing in the sky with the angels oh my god wow <laughs> wow poet poet ho yaar ki poet ha prashant you want to chip in you know it's amalapuram i'm sorry i wasn't there on that trip this is probably that spice journey that you, all of you guys took right the probably food maybe food. no th- this might have been coast coast to coast you were there oh, maybe coast to coast oh, yeah. it may have been the extreme food i don't know anyway yeah the, the yeah. christ no, no, the redeema no, 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 statue you didn't you don't remember christ the redeema statue just outside yeah. amalapuram uh, no, no prashant wasn't there i wasn't there he wasn't there the ah. christ statue and But i what what a place and there were hundreds of buses that was stopping outside to get yeah. food packed and the hit item of course the biggest one was the biryanis yeah i mean yeah. there were just these huge cauldrons of biryani cauldron after cauldron after cauldron after cauldron just biryani 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 and in the counter there were four guys behind the counter mayur describe that scene man it was incredible it was like so this is still it's still part of that vishnu sri non veg men this was their biryani delivery area they had about i think 15 odd people there were four behind the counter who were like taking orders then they would pass the order on there were these giant urns there were like people just scooping out and putting in wrapped newspapers exactly and we checked a few it was off by like maybe 10 12 grams but exactly 1.2 kilograms of biryani with six or seven large chicken pieces for 90 rupees and oh, they were like just wrap so they would come they would scoop they would wrap they would put to the next guy they had these big spools of dhaga the cotton uh, soup yeah. and they would like tie it and cut it and they would throw it on it was like Production. it was like a factory um, like thousands yeah. of pack and tak 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 it was yeah, like yeah, unreal yeah. to see yeah, and i remember was... rocky asking the guy like how many do you run out so he said we have special on festive nowadays we don't do this but on festival days we can do about 10000 of these packs they said we call in more people 10000 packs of 1.2 kilograms each and it's not just the bus people it's like people from all around they come i mean those are the numbers just, just imagine this is 12, one case. 13 tons of biryani and it's phenomenal yeah. now imagine packing 10000 of those of those bundles here yeah? i mean you take a leaf you know you wrap it in a cone you throw in seven pieces of chicken and the rice you wrap it up give it to a guy Oof. he covers it in newspaper ties a string around it it is absolutely leak proof and throws in a packet of pachri and some uh, you know of yogurt and some uh, whatever pickle or whatever this stuff with it and that is all done in under 10 or 12 seconds here. and they're packing like five or six of these per person so It's you normal, know yeah. yeah i mean they're like doing 25 a minute 25 a minute continuous non stop but, but there's a lovely bridge and the river was it a river or a backwater what was it it's a river or a backwater i think it was a dried up river uh, this because the christ the redeemer was, statue yeah but it's it's very close to the coast so it could even be like the spill over the backwater the backwater is it also the place where we had that one murti with the two elephants on the side of it we went and took photographs there was like just on the edge of the river bank i don't yes, know yes 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 place. yes this is the same we place we have some photographs had, yeah and it had this make believe boat made of concrete yeah around there so yeah this is the same area but i would say since you spoke about kathal and we'll maybe talk about this when we've finished india and we you know take you to mauritius sri lanka nobody does kathal like they do in sri lanka i mean that was the revelation to me i mean and i think the kathal there is also a little different but anyway coming back to andhra this uh, this small town is a really beautiful town in fact it's it's got a really nice area where you can walk by the river or backwater whatever it is so if you're driving a you know if you're planning a road trip around andhra make sure amlapuram is one of your night stops because it's it's got more than just this biryani to offer yeah wasn't it in some movie song also ah ante amlapur rocky used to sing it all the time in his dhoti <laughs> rocky bataiye i was hoping i was hoping you had forgotten about that what <laughs> <laughs> was the song rocky kindly tell rocky us rocky sang it on ah, the show ante amlapuram ah ante den 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 <laughs> the only song that i remember which only a man as crude as mahmood could have done in that song muttu kodi kovadi eda that was a very pleasant song 
प्यार में जो ना करना चाहे वो भी मुझे करना पड़ा अयोड़ा अयोड़ा मुठ गोड़ी को वाड़ी अड़ा ऑफकोर्स टूडे भी पोलिटिकली इन करेक्ट गॉप इज सॉन्ग लाइक दैट एंड हीव टू हीट बी कैंसल बट ओके वी गाइज जस्ट हैव Nellore pedi appa and machli patnam let's let's race through this oh no 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 don't race through machli patnam man you're forgetting okay. rk mess you are forgetting oh there's a lot of stuff there but prashant where do you want to where do you want to stop you want to stop at nellore machli patnam you can Pedipala. take me anywhere i've gone nowhere oh you that kind <laughs> none of, of these places <laughs> so these are all on schedules that i was not there on no no so, it is beautiful and and you know amlapuram has has a double uh, advantage it's near the godavari it's almost on the godavari and in fact now the town has grown and it's on the godavari and then of course near the ocean here so you can you, you could be right either way dk it could be one of the two it could but, be yeah but it is it is a beautiful little town and just for the food i mean just for that biryani it is worth going and stopping there and just eating in fact if you're going to spend like a week just eating food i think if you start from like hyderabad and make your way to calcutta you have pretty much covered the best food destination journey in india or you could mm. go start from uh, kerala and make your way through tamil nadu and karnataka or you could start in gujarat and make your way to punjab well actually it's hard to say cuz you are such a big fan or you could or you could go to kashmir and have the wazwan and make your way down to himachal yeah <laughs> i mean it is just incredible basically bahut acha khana khana hai to lockdown se nikalna padega and road pe jana padega jana padega to machli patnam mein kya hua bataiye mayur तो मछली पटनम में एक तो वी वेंट टू दैट ब्यूटीफुल प्लेस थट्टा राव स्वीट एंड मिस्टर थट्टा राव वॉज देयर एंड ही शोड अस ऑल दीज फोटोग्राफ्स ही वॉज अ फ्रीडम फाइटर एंड ऑल एंड देन ही केम इन सेट अप दिस बेकरी दिस बेकरी वॉज फेमस फॉर इट्स बंदर लड्डूज अगेन एंड इट्स रियली नाइस काजू मिठाई एंड व्हीट हलवाज एंड एक्चुअली दिस इज द प्लेस नाउ आई रिमेंबर वे रॉकी डिस्क्राइब दैट a bandar laddu is a marriage between a besan laddu that fell into the moti chur yes But more importantly they had the rk mess i don't know if you guys remember the rk mess and how good that food was with that gentleman who telugu gentleman he didn't speak any telugu his son was standing next to us and talking and he started with 170 rupees and now he had three of them there was like you mean he spoke only telugu he didn't speak any english or hindi yeah exactly uh, yeah he spoke <laughs> he said there was a telugu was gentleman who didn't speak any telugu and he stood there and his son spoke i said mayur tu bada telugu ka gyani ban gaya i mean i mean i thoda confused ho gaya they were actually they were actually speaking klingon to each other and pretending it was telugu nobody could tell so but he now got three he had an rk mess which is where we ate and we made all these jokes about we are cheap so we find the cheapest then he had something for mid level and families and then we had a deluxe thing and his food oh mother what rocky will remember from there is the kaju fish halwa and the prawn kalakand that that you had rocky Yeah the kaju fish halwa was a very average sort of dish i really didn't enjoy it that much and i remember saying so but the food was brilliant but the one thing that we really enjoyed was his sambar i mean his sambar was out of the world and when we were eating it i was like man this is so good and he was like you know we are the only ones who make it in this entire yeah. area they were supplying it to 150 eateries all his competitors were also buying their sambar from him yeah because they were like <laughs> really you know we can't make it that well what's the point so he had an entire kitchen with like 30 35 staff dedicated to making sambar and that's all they were doing all day and then they were just carrying it in these pails and covered uh, packets and you know big drums and i was like what is all this and they were like the sambar is going to everybody's uh, restaurants and i was like wow that is a good gig man but again beautiful food amazing meats amazing seafood you know it is it is just a pleasure to be in places like this where somebody has worked so hard who starting as a sweeper in a small canteen in a school in a college and then working his way up into becoming the owner of three large restaurants and obviously where uh, even very, your competitors come and get your stuff to yeah, serve it <laughs> and really well to do but that ethos of hard work and service you know that is what this country is missing here this country is lacking that even if you go to you know what what mayur was talking about just now that we went and had the uh, the bandar laddu and we went down to the tatarao sweets mr tatarao was there is a freedom fighter yeah and mm-hmm. he was so proud of just serving people and fighting the good fight for no reason for no gain yeah. just like yeah. the guy at uh, dhambu ke laddu so many dhambu such dhambu ke laddu he met some just, real characters man you know yeah. good people talking about the unity of india the oneness of india how we serve our people our country by doing the best we can forget the differences you know there is we are all the same i mean this is this has been the mantra of why this country became successful till very recently and why we reached where we reached and i think we are 
heading in the opposite direction on a down slope but that's my opinion and a lot of you will differ with it you're most welcome to. no actually it's very true i mean i but though i would just change one thing i wouldn't say forget the differences i just cherish the differences embrace the differences yeah i mean there's so much when you go to hyderabad i mean you know the the cuisine is has gained from the hindus and the muslims and you know everyone that who's moved through that area yeah i mean it's it's that richness how, how does that richness come it doesn't come singularly right i mean it's it's like all the influences that come in and something great comes out of that it's like of, of preparing a dish yeah exactly Main, i mean aapko you... thoda sa garlic bhi chahiye smelly rocky bhi aur nikku aap... jaisa nikku <laughs> nikku <laughs> <laughs> nikku jaisi tulsi bhi me ha ah, exactly <laughs> te ya aur aur mayur jaisi sadi machli bhi chahiye लेकिन आप वेजिटेरियन हो गए सड़ी भी मस्ती मत बोल करेला बोल ले टिंडा बोल दे कुछ भी बोल दे मच्छी किसको बोल रहा है सड़ेला करेला सड़ेला करेला तो फिर तो दिस इज जस्ट टू पुट दैट जस्ट इमेजिन व्हाट द क्विजीन और द फूड इन आवर कंट्री इन इंडिया वुड बी लाइक इफ वी हैड नॉट वेलकम्ड ऑल दीस फॉरेन इन्फ्लुएंसेस आई मीन लाइक नो चिली नो पोटैटो नो टोमेटो नो Really, man. I mean, it's no biryani, and the biryani, no biryani, no biryani, no samosa. They all exactly. came from outside, yeah. Absolutely, even jalebi, yeah. Jalebi, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, and and to think that you know you got aloo's only like three hundred years or four hundred years back, yeah. No tea, you know? no tea, no uh, chai, no chai, no chai. No, no coffee. tea, no coffee. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean that one Baba Buddha, or whatever his name was, who brought uh, that one bean. you yeah. know risking his entire uh, risking his life from yemen because only the royalty could drink coffee there and yeah. if you try to sort of smuggle out coffee from yemen they would behead you i mean he brought one bean and today you know i mean i'm seeing and thanks uh, mayu for recommending seven corridors if i got the coffee from them it's spectacular man yeah yeah it's very very so good. any of you who are foodies and bigots it doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work <laughs> you just need to then 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 you can and only stick you have to abandon chawal. one yeah. either abandon food yeah, or exactly. abandon bigotry <laughs> otherwise you're a hypocrite yeah straight seedhi baat so yeah, and it is it is better to be a egg crate than to be a hypocrite uh, or a gold egg crate <laughs> so guys we have just nellor and pedi palla You guys want to quickly go through that Rocky and Muir in five minutes because hey, we have gone way over. That was where the Punjabi daba was. Oh yes, we've we done that. About it. So uh, Nellor, uh, tell us about your memorable anecdote from Nellor before we wind up. Do you remember Rock? We we had that uh, young guy. He took us out on his boat and we did. Uh, we were trolling for uh, fish and then we caught a small bluefin tuna, which is like a really really oh dear god is is thing and we put it right back in because he's like. ऐसा काम मत करो इज इट दैट वन दैट वाज इन चेन्नई यार दैट वाज इन चेन्नई बोट क्लब नेलोर नेलोर नो 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 चेन्नई बोट क्लब नो नो बोट क्लब वी वेंट फिशिंग इन चेन्नई बोट क्लब आई रिमेंबर दैट वाज नॉट वी वी डिडंट गो फिशिंग इन द नेलोर आई रिमेंबर द चेन्नई बोट क्लब वेयर वी कॉट वन फिश एंड आई वांटेड टू वॉमिट आई थिंक आई डिड बिकॉज़ इट वाज सच अ चॉपी सी जे मुझे मैंने उल्टी आ गई नो आई एम फेली श्योर इट वाज नेलोर ओके आई विल टेल यू व्हाट वी विल वी विल चेक ऑन दिस एंड कम बैक बिकॉज़ वी हैव मेनी एपिसोड्स टू गो So I've made a note of this. I've made a note of all the places we've missed out, also Himachal and all these. And then we will revisit these and condense them into one lovely mishmash of a few episodes. Yeah, but all but all said and done, you know the 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 state of Andhra Pradesh when we went there, the unified state of Andhra Pradesh is a beautiful place with the with the diamond mines. At one point, the only diamond mines in the world. Yeah, I mean that was quite a thing and uh, beautiful old structures. So much history of all kinds. you know conquerors coming conquerors going the maratha sweeping across the mughals hanging around i mean it was it's incredible to sort of just see what the rich the richness and the diversity of the food of andhra pradesh is totally mind boggling and of course it is for me the king of spice in this country if there's one place where spice is used to its maximum potential for me that state would be andhra pradesh yeah, i should just go back to just have another meal at spice menu chalo karenge when we get back chal chal i am going anyway as soon as this lift up is done i am spending two months going across the country eating chalo baby we all do it together so on that note we will give you the food code but first i'd like to appeal once again do share with your friends about this podcast tell them to listen to it let's increase the community all across the country of people who are really passionate about travel and food so that when we get rocky muir prashant and nikku back on the road we have as many pit stops as possible at least let's say two dozen across the country where we have people across 
you know all of you community of hompers who participate and tell us what to do write into us at homp2020 at gmail.com i repeat h o m p 2020 at gmail.com with your experiences travel food must haves and other advice on that note boys you want to give the food code sure let me go first okay the beautiful variety of the incredible food in andhra we are all one and it's about time you realize that you bandra <laughs> <laughs> the food is delicious and the unlimited thalis can make you really really full but don't worry you can digest it if you just dance like the ongol pull <laughs> baba prashant swears by bahar not andar mayur <laughs> loves the laddu named after the bandar rocky had fish that was sada and niku muttu kodi ko variyada muttu kodi ko variyada super today is championship niku absolutely championship bina prashant come on give us one yeah yeah niku is really outshown all of us all of us don't know no, i i don't even try just, just put your head under the camera lights and you light outshine all of us yeah i buy a few megawatts come on prashant all your three friends have called you can pick up a poem so what if you bold <laughs> <laughs> on that note guys have a great night have a wonderful life and pray that this lockdown finishes fast and if you can help it in your town make sure no one goes hungry get involved with the organizations local community halls or ngos to ensure everyone gets food yes absolutely and be good to people eat and drink well it makes you happy uh, be happy enjoy your life it's short and soon it'll be over one way or another <laughs> <laughs> on okay, that very then. optimistic note <laughs> i'm scared to go to bed now abhi so matlab in the in the larger scope of things yaar in a timeless country like india what is what 70 is, 80 100 exactly. years exactly in in the long run we're all dead anyway yeah exactly blink of an eye blink of an eye yeah. all right boys on that happy note see you, see you in hell you. Good, good night, night. <laughs> All the news laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. To catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 